What's the story, Morning Glory? What's the word, Hummingbird? Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of Unexpected The Tell All Part 2. It was a little bit uneventful. Um, there wasn't anything really revealing, um, any untold secrets or anything like that. Um, just a little bit with Lily and Lawrence, but we'll get to them when we get to them. So as far as Jason coming back on stage for this big closing argument, um, attorney Jason, uh, disappointed us like he always does. So he came back on stage because he was going to give his final closing argument to the jury and they gave him the floor. They gave him more than ample time to speak his mind, to wrap it all up. And he just faltered nothing. He gave us absolutely nothing. So while he was trying to collect his thoughts, we moved on to Kylan and Ananda asked Kylan, um, how does she feel whenever Jason would yell at her? And Kylan said that it was hurtful. And she said that, but it was important for them to stay together because she wants to keep her family intact. Meaning that, you know, I will take whatever I got to take from him just so that we can stay together for our son. As everybody knows that that's never a good idea. It's never for the benefit of the child. It ends up being actually more detrimental to the child if parents who are in a very toxic relationship remain together because your child is a witness to the toxicity. So the child has two unhappy parents together instead of two happy parents apart. So, you know, she'll, she'll realize all of this soon enough. Colin will realize it soon enough that this is just not it for her, especially if Jason is not willing to change at all. Um, so she's going to hit rock bottom. Hopefully when she does hit rock bottom and realizes that she's in a really bad situation, that it's not going to be too damn late. So, once again, they gave um, counsel Jason the floor to give his closing argument to the jury. And once again, he faltered. So um, Colin, I guess, you know, to fill up the space and the time, um, <laughs> Colin says that we love each other and that's really all that matters. Now, they moved on to the other people on stage. Um, Jenna asked, Jenna made a statement that she really admired Lily and Lawrence's uh, blended family and how Lawrence has really stepped up, and he truly has, how he's really stepped up to being a step parent to baby, I mean, to uh, Aaliyah. And uh, Jenna says that she hopes that when it's her time that, you know, she'll be able to have a very healthy blended family like um, Lily and Lawrence. And I thought that was really nice of Jenna to say that, to compliment them on that, because, yeah, that is really important. And Lawrence is doing a great job with that. And um, to me, Jenna seemed like really bright, happy cheerful she seemed like you know obviously you know a weight has been lifted off her shoulder that she now that she has moved on away from Aiden and um yeah so Jenna was you know looking really good so I guess when the attention was no longer on them Jason and Kylan decided to leave <laughs> when you know the show kind of moved on to the other couples so they got up they left the stage again and while they were backstage Erica Emerson's mom um, came out of nowhere and wanted to give Kylan a hug Okay, fine. She gave the girl a hug. That was a good thing because you can never have, you know, too much support or too much love. But y'all, I don't see it for Erica. I don't like Erica. To me, it was really random. Um, I understand the positivity of it. You know, she saw this poor girl who she believes is in great distress, who's in a abusive relationship. And she just wanted to show her support. She just wanted to show her love. But whatever, I could care less about what Erica does. And Colin was kind of like, uh, what's going on and I'm fine and you don't have to worry about me a uh, strange lady I don't know who you are but whatever you know Colin was like really not it seemed like to me she accepted the hug and she hugged her back but Kylan just seemed really confused about it all and when they got backstage to where Jason's parents were waiting Jason's dad actually said that he thought that they that they did good that Jason did good and Colin did good well Colin was very brave to come up there on that stage and to you know defend Jason's actions and to stand firm in her relationship with Jason. She was extremely brave because those questions and the criticism and the 
unsolicited advice was coming to her left and right. And she was able to take it all in and, you know, she did the best that she could. So Colin definitely was a trooper for defending this crazy relationship that she's in. Jason was his usual Jason self. And so the dad was like, yeah, y'all did really great. Y'all did great. And I was like, dad, are you ever, well, I guess the dad says that he's tried to put, set Jason straight, but it's just hasn't, it, it's never worked. And he's just like giving up on it all, I guess, whatever. But it just kind of was this really odd thing to say, knowing how, Knowing exactly, you know, what Colin is going through with this guy, it was just a very strange thing to say, to compliment them, that, you know, they did, that they did really well. I mean, as far as what? Jason was insulting the people on stage, the other, you know, cast members. He left, came back, left, came back, made a complete spectacle of himself. You know, he walks back on stage calling himself, you know, the professional raw dogger is back. And it's like, you think your son did well? Okay, dad, whatever. Moving on from that. So Colin and Jason, hopefully that's the end of it. Hopefully we'll never see these people again. Not because I have any kind of dislike for Jason. I really don't because I don't know him. You know, this isn't my kid. He's not dating my daughter. So it's nothing personal, but I think that whatever they need to work out, they need to work out in private. I don't think that as young as they are and as immature as they are, that these very deep, deep relationship problems need to be um, dealt with under the spotlight of a major television show. Um, they need to kind of deal with this in private and just work it out, you know, out away from cameras, away from an international or nationally broadcasted show. Um, I don't think it's good for Kylan. I don't think it's good for the baby. They need to just stay away from the spotlight. Moving on to Jenna. So Jenna tells us that she has moved out from the home that she shared with Aiden four months ago with her son, Luca. Um, all the parents are in great support of Jenna moving out. And I think most people watching the show are in support of Jenna moving out because the whole entire time that we saw Aiden, he was angry, in a bad mood talking really crazy to her, um, not being the supportive partner he should be for her. Um, everybody raves about how he's a great dad. As far as I can see, it seems like he is a really great father to their son. Um, but as far as him and Jenna, I think collectively we're all very supportive of her leaving Aiden. And Ananda asked Jenna's father, uh, what were his thoughts on how Aiden treated Jenna? And the father was, he called him a douchebag. He says, I thought he was a real douchebag. And I thought it was a little bit interesting that Jenna stood up for Aiden at that moment and said, you know, don't diss Aiden like that. And I was like, girl, that's not dissing him. He's calling it for what it is. Uh, he was acting like a douchebag to you, Jenna. Um, your dad was actually being polite by calling him a douchebag because it could have been a couple of other choice words he could have used to describe Aiden when it came to how he treated you how he treated his daughter so him calling Aiden a douchebag I thought he was showing a lot of restraint and trying to keep it very PG because we can all think of some more colorful names to call Aiden for how he treated Jenna so I didn't understand why she was so steadfast in trying to defend him um, especially since they're not even together anymore she didn't have to like like clap her hands and say yes dad go. Yeah. He called him a douchebag, but she shouldn't have said anything at all because it's like, why are you defending someone who treated you so bad and who probably wouldn't defend you if somebody called you a name? So Jenna compared Aiden to Jason and we do see the similarities there. Um, Jason, his issues come from, um, he's just, plain dumb and stupid and he he's very mean and he's very hurtful in what he says Aiden it seems like his anger his meanness comes from anger uh it just seems like this boiling storm that is in constant motion right beneath the surface with Aiden and it's like you can tell that when he's angry with Jenna he is showing restraint and not doing a really good job of it, but you can tell that he's showing restraint and that when he gets to his boiling point, it, it's, it's explosive and ve probably very, very ugly. Whereas 
Jason lets it out as it's building up. He lets it out as it's building up. He lets it out. You know, he says the dumb things that he says, um, as they just form into his brain, he just lets it all out. Aiden is quiet, but you can see the anger just constantly boiling underneath. And, um, I wonder if Aiden has high blood pressure just from them, just from that constantly being in that angry state of mind. So, there is a lot of similarities between Aiden and Jason. Um, and then they mainly talk about, oh, and then she also said that um, they mainly talk through text. They don't really talk, I guess, in person or on the phone. She says she has very little contact with Aiden. Um, they just mainly text each other when it comes to dealing with their son. And um, that's how it is until they go to their custody hearing. And so hopefully we'll hear some news somewhere about how the custody hearing worked out. But Jenna has moved on. Thank God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. She has definitely moved on. Um, the whole time I watched this season and I would see Aiden, I always was very curious as far as like what his parents like what their input is like, what are they thinking? What are they going through? Um, what's the relationship between Aiden and his own family? Totally understand that. They, excuse me. They didn't want to be a part of the show completely their right to not be a part of the show. Um, but I'm just curious as far as like, you know, what kind of people are they? How do they relate to their son? How do they relate to Jenna? How do they relate to Jenna's family, etc. Moving on from there, Emerson. <sighs> Y'all, I'm going to let you know right now, if <laughs> I don't like Erica, I don't like anything about Erica, and I really don't like her husband either. Um, they're despicable to me, absolutely despicable, because at the end of the day, the way that I see it, um, she changed the, the course of her and her daughter's relationship because of mason spending or uh sleeping in the same room with emerson and i understand everybody comes to me and tells me that is erica's house these are her rules they have to abide by it she didn't want to abide so she left okay i totally get that my issue isn't the fact that she needs to accept her daughter breaking her rules my issue is i don't think that rule should have been in place at that particular moment as far as you know like when they first when she first came home from the hospital after giving birth i don't think that i think that it would have been okay if she would have been a little bit lax on the rules i'm not in support of a daughter disobeying their mother i'm not in support of that and i understand this whole thing about her house her rules she can have whatever rules she wants she can have a rule that everybody has to wear yellow in her house i get that i just feel like for the sake of her relationship with her daughter at a very critical point you know when her daughter had just given birth and she's also a new mom um i think that she should have bent the rules just a tiny tiny bit so that she can preserve her relationship with her daughter and let be close with her daughter and her grandson um and I don't understand, even the stepfather, Sai, stepped in and said that he wasn't, you know, he doesn't condone them having sex. I don't even think that these kids were thinking about having sex, you know, a day or two after she gave birth. I don't think that was why they wanted to be in the room together. I don't think it was because they wanted to have sex. I think they were in the room together to help each other out with a new baby. And, you know, just to kind of like be there to support one another. So, and then the fact that how Erica talks about mason's family and his mother and how it's just despicable and ugly and it's tasteless and it's disgusting um she's very very judgy and it's like she and her husband and her family they can do no wrong they're like perfect angels it's everybody else's fault but let's get into this so they talk about her, um ananda you know shows the similarities between erica Erica's youth and Emerson's youth. You know, Erica herself was rebellious. She didn't like to follow the rules. She got pregnant at an early age, just like Emerson. Um, the relationship with her, so the relationship between Erica and Emerson has improved a lot since Emerson had left because, you know, they're not at each other's throat constantly. So, Emerson says that life is a lot more peaceful at Mason's house. They talk about Mason's mom. Um, Erica mentions how the mom went back to jail because she left the county and she's not supposed to leave the county. Um, she loves referring to Mason's home as a halfway house. Absolutely despicable. Like, like, what are you doing, Erica? Why are you like that? Why are you just 
Why are you such a mean human? Why? Um, Erica said that Emily had, I mean, not Emily, Erica said that Emerson had confided in her that, um, she felt a lot safer when Mason's mom was not in the house, because I think there was a moment when Mason's mom had moved out. And so according to Erica, Emerson had told her mom that she felt a lot safer with Mason's mom not being in the home. And Emerson completely denied it. I don't know if she said this or not. I have no idea. But even if she did say it, I felt like that's something that Erica's mom shouldn't have put out there. So that kind of showed me that Erica's mom, I mean that, that Emerson's mom, sorry, that kind of showed me that Erica is really struggling with Emerson living in Mason's home because she really wants to, I guess, get in between the relationship between Emerson and Mason and his family, because that is something that your daughter confided in you. If she did say that, which Emerson denies even saying that, that is something that your daughter confided in you. And now you're blasting it on national television in front of his family. Now, after saying that, Erica, how do you think things are going to be when Emerson goes back into that house? Why do you want to disrupt whatever serenity that she may have in that home? Why would you want to do that? If you want your daughter to come back to you, have a conversation with her. Don't go out there and blast secrets that your daughter told you of how she really felt inside about something. If she even told you that, which is up for debate. So... Emerson completely denied saying that. Um, I have a feeling that she didn't say that. But then I don't want to, as much as I dislike Erica, I don't want to believe that she would just tell a bold-faced lie like that, like a really ugly, disgusting, bold-faced lie about her own daughter just to disrupt whatever's going on in Mason's home. I, I refuse to believe that she would do anything that horrible. Maybe Emerson said it, but she forgot it. Maybe Emerson something said something similar to that. And... Erica misunderstood or took it another way. Um, maybe Emerson was talking about something else. Maybe she was like, you know, maybe the mother doesn't get along with other members of the family. Maybe she doesn't get along with her son, doesn't get along with her husband. And so maybe Emerson meant overall is peaceful when she's not there because maybe the mother argues with some of the people in the family, in the household. Maybe that's what she meant. Not necessarily her safety, but I don't know. But whatever it was, Erica shouldn't have blasted it. And if she made it up, that just once again proves what an ugly human she is. She loves referring to, like I said before, she loves referring to their home as a halfway house. Um, Erica has no regret calling Mason's house a halfway house. Um, this is the first time that the two moms met. So the two moms met, Mason's mom and Erica's mom, and... Um, Erica brings up the whole thing about, well, you know, I would invite you to my home, but you're not allowed to leave the county. And the mom, Mason's mom was like that. You don't know what's going on with me and my situation. You're just, you know, saying horrible things or just being very judgy. Um, you don't know what's going on over here. So she says that she can leave the county if she wants to. I don't know what's going on with Mason's mom as far as her, I don't know, her issues with her probation terms of her probation. I don't know if she can leave the county, can't leave the county. I don't know. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Um, it's just another way that Erica likes to throw digs at Mason's family. Um, when they go back to talk about the day that Emerson left, um, and she left when the mother, when Erica caught Mason in Emerson's bedroom, they had that argument. And that's when Emerson decided to leave with Mason. So she herself voluntarily called Ernie, Mason's father, to come and pick her up because things have reached a boiling point between her and her mom. So the fact that Erica likes to refer to that kind of like, you know, she wants to use the word kidnapping, but she doesn't. But she says things like, Ernie took my teenage daughter, my postpartum teenage daughter. He took her against my permission because I told him not to leave with my postpartum daughter. There she goes again, putting 20 on 10. 
Um, nobody took your daughter anywhere. Your daughter voluntarily left. I don't even have to explain it because we all saw it with our own eyeballs. We know what the deal is. You want to demonize or criminalize Ernie's father, uh, because once again, it's not Emerson's fault. It's, it's not like Emerson is making these decisions for herself. She's being pushed by Mason's family. And at the end of it all, at the end of their little segment at this tell all, when they went into the back room, even Cy. Um, Emerson's stepfather had said something like, well, it seems like, you know, Emerson is under some type of a, a of control over there because when she comes to us and tells us things, it's completely different than when she's with them. Like they have her under some type of mind control. Like, why do y'all think that Emerson cannot have has no ability to make any decisions for herself after y'all saw her admit that she is rebellious and Erica talked about the similarities between her and Emerson being rebellious, not wanting to follow the rules. You acknowledge that you and your daughter have that in common, but still it's nothing is ever Emerson's fault. It's Mason and his evil family, you know, kidnapping your daughter and having her under some type of um, mind control. Mason apologized to Erica for breaking the rules. That was a very mature thing for him to do because he just needs to get along with these people, bottom line. And if he has to apologize to Erica, he has to apologize to Erica. And I'm pretty sure Mason just seems like, you know what, I'm tired of the constant back and forth, the bickering, the fighting, you know, not being welcomed in that home, being thrown out of this home. What I'm just tired of it all. I'll apologize. I'll do whatever I got. That's what it seemed like to me. He just wants peace. He just wants to everybody to get along. So he went ahead and he apologized. Erica, thank God, accepted the apology and she accepted it genuinely. There was no but attached to it. It was just, thank you for apologizing. I really needed that. And, um, of course, there's a tiny part of me that wishes he didn't apologize, but the rules were the rules. So my issue isn't the fact that, you know, um, that they didn't do anything wrong by breaking her rules. She had a rule. They broke it. It is what it is. I just felt like Erica's mom should have bent the rules a little bit uh, for this particular situation of, you know, her daughter coming home after having a baby. So I don't know what's going to happen with these people. I would love to see more of them just to see the follow up to see, you know, if things had improved or not. Um, Emerson was clearly upset that her mom had put words in her mouth, as she said, when they went backstage, uh, because she completely denied saying that she felt safer when Mason's mom wasn't there in the house. And Mason told Emerson, I know you didn't say that. I totally believe you that you wouldn't have said something like that. Um, I feel like she didn't say that either. But then if you believe that Emerson didn't say that, you have to believe that Erica just sold a bold faced lie on her own daughter and wanted to create tension in the home that her daughter and her grandson live in. For what reason? I don't know. If you want your daughter to come back, just talk to her. Moving on from them, Lily. Not much to say here. Um, the only thing that was revealing about Lily and Lawrence is that they're going to be moving back into Lily's parents' home. Lily's parents are moving out into a 55 and up community. Um, so they're going to have that big old house to themselves, more space for them, more space for the kids. And I think it's just absolutely beautiful that her parents were willing to do that. And of course, they still have to pay rent. And thankfully, they're going to be paying the same amount of rent or less to Lily's parents than they were at the apartment that they were living in and getting a lot more space out of it. Supposedly, the rent was raised to some ridiculous amount in their apartment complex. And so her parents are extremely gracious. Uh, for allowing them to live in that uh, in their home while they move out. Um, yeah, that's a wonderful thing for them to do. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing for them to do, uh, for them to do that. I feel like, you know, if... If the dad, um, Lily's stepfather, like that's his home. If he wanted to stay in his home, he has the right to do that. You know, he has the right to stay in. He doesn't have to go live in a 55 and up community. If he wants to stay in that house, you know, he, and the reason why I'm saying that is because they talked about how Lily's mother had a lot, she had to do a lot of convincing, uh, for him to agree with her to move out of the house. And, um, you know, if he wants to enjoy his house in his retirement years, he has every right to do that. But the fact that he went ahead and went along with Lily's mom just to keep the peace, you know, happy wife, happy life, just shows how gracious he is. And I hope that Lily and Lawrence totally understand how gracious her parents are for letting them live in that house while still paying the same amount of rent. Um, so that was good. They don't want to rush into getting married. 
it's just too much. You see, my idea of getting married is so different from everybody else's idea of getting married, I guess. Because they talked about, you know, Lily said, oh, it's just a lot of work, you know, planning a wedding. I'm like, planning what wedding? I don't see anything wrong with people getting married at the courthouse. And I understand, you know, you want to have this princess fairy tale wedding, but if it's not in the cards and it's not in the budget, why don't you just go to the, and I, I totally get it. Everybody has the right to have the wedding that they want. You want this extravagant Disney princess wedding with the horse drawn carriage and the doves flying around and all of this and 55 bridesmaids and 55 groomsmen. You have the right. You have the right, you have the right to, to, to penny pinch and save your money until you get exactly what you want. You have the absolute right to do that. I'm kind of like the person It's like, it's not really about the wedding. It's just about the marriage, the relationship. Where do we go after the day we get married? What is life like after that? That's what I'm more concerned about. And look, <laughs> They don't have to look, it doesn't really matter. They're living like husband and wife anyway. What does it matter? What does it matter? It really doesn't. In in America, it really doesn't matter whether you are legally married or you're not legally married, because there's this thing called common law marriage. So you're living like husband and wife. The law kind of sees you as husband and wife. Kind of like, what's the purpose? What's the point of going through the whole um, formality of it all or the le the legality of it all? Not There's not much going on there. It doesn't really matter. Whatever. It's whatever y'all want to do. I just don't see anything wrong with if you really want to be married legally, just go to the courthouse and you can have a reception later or whatever. But I don't care about the wedding. Like I said, I don't care about this big extravagant wedding. Um, I'm not going to, if I'm going to save money, I'm saving money for something long lasting, like down payment on my own house or a new car or a vacation around the world or something like that. Not for this one day that no one's really going to remember or really care about it. No, I'm not going to, no, I'm not, I'm not going to do that, but that's just me. So they're doing good. Lily and Lawrence are doing great. Uh, they're still together, still in love. Um, they're not sleeping in the same bed and they're in the same bedroom, but not in the same bed because the whole setup is just ridiculous. Like Lily, please train your daughter to sleep in her own room. It's going to have to start. If you don't do it now, it's never going to happen. It will not happen if you don't train her to sleep by herself now. It's not going to happen if you don't try to do it now. And then um, the whole thing about when she said, if Aaliyah was in her own room and then she cries out for me, then I have to get up. I'm not going to get any sleep. And the baby's going to wake up when I wake up and we're all going to be up or we're all going to be cranky and it's all going to be this and it's all going to be that. And I'm just like then you got to sort of like, I mean, eventually she's going to learn how to sleep through the night. I mean, how old is she? Like four? She's going to learn how to sleep through the night eventually. You know, if your little one, it's all, it's, it's going to happen. She's not going to be 25 years old crying out for her mom in the middle of the night. At some point, she's going to learn how to sleep through the night, or she's going to learn how to comfort herself when she does wake up in the middle of the night. But you and your kids in one bed, Lawrence in another bed, the room being as cramped as it is, well, y'all are going to be moving on anyway, so it's not going to be cramped anymore. But I think it's time for you to train your daughter to sleep, you know, in her own room. But that's neither here nor there. It's not my child. It's not my problem. I'm not waking up in the middle of the night for nobody. So it's not my problem. You do whatever's best for you, girl. But that is the end of the tell all. And it seemed like that's the end end. Like there's no more part three. Like there's no part three. So we wrapped another season of Unexpected. Um, it was a wild, wild ride. Thanks to <laughs> Jason and Kylan. Um, good luck to all of them. I hope nothing but the best for all of these young parents. And yeah, it is what it is. Jenna, so proud of you, girl. So, so, so proud of you for making that major step for the benefit of yourself and your son and your relationship with Aiden. It might actually improve now that y'all are going to be living separately and no longer together. Lily and Lauren seem to be doing fine. Um, the three T's, they all seem to be doing fine. Um, let's just hope that with um, Kylan and Jason, that they find some peace either together or apart, preferably apart. And that Kylan, you know, reconnects with her parents. That's extremely important. And yeah, that's all I got to say. This has gone on way too long. If you made it this far in my video, if you made it this far in all of my unexpected reviews, I do 
appreciate it so much. Thank you. I'm on your way out. Don't forget to rate the video. If you like this content, subscribe. If you don't like this content, don't worry about it. Thank you for stopping by anyway. I do appreciate any second that anybody spends with me on my channel. Um, and that's it. And I will definitely talk to you later.